to peja wa zilo neng ya wa ona wa zhu to la tu yao tan ta te shi na bai hai la lu na se cha ta to nation da ne ya tie to chi cha lu lu ngan nu na lu zhong shan nu na ne ya ta che la wa yi la he ne shan da hai tie ti yo mo ne tu mo te e tu mi yo mong na she so lu sha tie nu na ne ya zhong hai tie tu mo ne ya ona wa zhu ki cha ke pe ya mi yo mong ti to sa te cha na so thank you very much for all of you who are joining us uh, by television who are not here uh, at the hotel today. One of the things in which the panel members uh, mentioned earlier in which um, you know, I'd like to, to recognize as well, uh, and Mary had already uh, left, but she made a comment about the support that uh, us uh, male uh, candidates of, uh, in the Hmong community, which receives a lot more support than the Hmong women. My, my answer to that is because the Hmong women are much smarter uh, than us. And so for us uh, Hmong men, we need a lot of help. Yeah. And, I, and, and I jokingly say that, but uh, on, on a serious note, but that is not beyond. At the MC, the two organizations are shown, they are the two Hmong and the two Hmong and the two Hmong. And so that is an indicator that the ones who will be uh, key players in the Hmong community in the future will be Hmong women. And it's, it's just a fact. Yeah. I always joke about it, but before I come and, and, and speak, I always make sure that my speech is written and approved by my wife, who is watching. <laughs> and so I want to I wanna acknowledge her as well. Uh, you saw her earlier in the video. She's the beautiful woman that came with a hyphenated name. Yeah, she's progressive, hyphenated. <laughs> And um, she, she is a low, but she wants to, everyone to remember that she is a, a low who's married to a Lee. And so all of this is not possible without her. Uh, my family continues to stand by me. And some of the marks by the elected earlier is on point in that we only do this uh, because we have a strong uh, spouse that supports us, a strong family that believes in the work that we do. Uh, for my beautiful wife and my two boys who are sitting at home cannot join us today uh, here at the hotel. Uh, I'm thinking about you guys and I'll be home tomorrow. Uh, but, um, you know, in terms of joking aside, uh, in regards to the, uh, the support for Hmong women, because what's going to happen is you're going to have the um, uh, educated Hmong woman who's not going to marry a Hmong boy who didn't graduate from high school. So for you boys out there, you guys better step it up because, you know, if, if I was the Hmong woman who has the PhD, I wouldn't be marrying that high school dropout either. So, you know, this is uh, me encouraging you Hmong boys who will become men that education is extremely important and you got to keep, uh, you got to make me proud, you know, I mean, you, you got to make sure that you're right there with the Hmong woman. And as I predict, we are seeing it unfold now. Uh, we saw Senator Mimoa um, become one of the highest electeds in this nation. Uh, no different than Bao Vang, who continues to run this wonderful organization, uh, the biggest nonprofit uh, that's run by a Hmong person in the United States of America, multi million dollar agency. Uh, these are strong Hmong women, these are smart Hmong women. And, And to, to Mary's point, uh, whenever us men run, we do need a lot of help. And um, they may, perhaps maybe that's part of the reasons, but not to belittle the issues that she raised, which is uh, on point as well. Uh, it's extremely important that we treat both uh, boys and girls equally. And um, video games. You let him stay in the bedroom, right? Right? So by design, by design, because you hustle the young woman, the young woman now has to make sure that she is on top of things so that she can get her homework done. 
And then the young boy who's sitting in the room said, oh, I'll just do that later. And in the end, So uh, as a note uh, to you, uh, you know, before I go any further, I want to talk to you a little bit about the campaign. I think the campaign is extremely important because for the Hmong community, they are very proud of what we've been able to accomplish in four years. When I uh, first ran for public office, I did not win. Uh, that was in 2002, the same year in which Senator Mimo got elected state senator here. I ran for school board in California. When I ran for school board, uh, Sacramento region, But a dream and a reality is two separate things. Our mechanism was not developed yet. Our infrastructure was not there yet. And as a hard lesson, we lost. Uh, we lost, but with, uh, certainly with uh, the strong support of the Hmong community. Lu uh, Yong, the Senator Mimua, came to support uh, the campaign. Uh, trustee Paul Lowe, who was a school board member, came to support the campaign as well. But we couldn't pull it off. Since then, since then, the Hmong community came back and um, organized, and we worked hard to understand the politics is, is and the political the undercurrent. I think I was supposed to sing, right? Is that, is that what I was? <laughs> but nonetheless, that was 10, uh, 10 years ago before we won again. When we won again, we won the same school board seat. Um, and then since the school board seat, we had opportunities to run for city council, uh, became the vice mayor, and then now the mayor, all within a span of four years. The city of Elk Grove is 170,000. Uh, voter. Uh, 55% per mailer. We've sent out 750,000 mail pieces to the residents of Elk Grove. I had six different opponents, and at the end of the day, this November 2016, we won with 45% of the votes. This is only possible because of we're sick and tired of being here in a country uh, where our parents, our grandparents, lived off of welfare. We're sick and tired of people looking at us and assuming that because we're Asian, we probably don't speak English. We're sick and tired of people looking at us and assuming that because I'm a Hmong man, I must beat my wife and I have multiple wives. Those are the times of the past. Those are the things that we have to squash and dispel the myth. Consistent with the theme today, power of the past. But the Japan panel member, Tu Moi Tu Apitu Hai Lu Hatian Yan Chong, Yan Po Tsake Wun Dei Pei. To you, I say, my work here is only possible, my ascension to mayor is only possible because there are those who have come before me. And I'm not talking about the immediate history. I'm talking about Some of you were born here. Some of you have no idea what it means to cross the Ming Kong River. Some of you have no idea of what the AK-47 sounds like. Some of you will never know what it sounds like to be bombed by B-52. Some of you have no idea what a bombe, uh, Bombi is. But for those of you who remember the rumbling of bombs in the distance, for those of you who understand what an AK-47 sounds like, I pay respects to you. The veterans who carried M16s instead of pencils, the 10-year-old that I met in Sacramento who came to me and said, I didn't have the money to pay for education, and so I didn't carry a pencil, Steve. I carry an M16. Those are the ones in which paved the way for us.
沙拉海港内省的杨忠和人，天合作人，多谢天母人王的本身的这都做，这些人。So please a round of applause for the Ceylon and our veterans of the Civil War, our parents, our grandparents. For me, in the work that I do, I remember those who have come before me. I remember General Vang Pao. Many of you know of him and speak of him. But I also remember people like Penyat de Wilifong, who was an advisor to the king, who in the nation of Laos was the highest ranking uh, politician. And even till this day, we miss his remains, who is still somewhere in Laos. I pay respects and I honor those people like Parliament member Lao Chu Cha, who lives in Porterville in California. People forget that he served as a member of the parliament, the highest legislative body in the country of Laos, where they only have one house. Not like us, we have a house of representative and a senate. In Laos, they only have one parliament. People like him, people like Tu uh, Ye, uh, who is a parliament member as well. But these are people who have paved the way and I think it's our obligation that for those of you in education, there's Tanku uh, Molea, who is a superintendent uh, of a public education. Now, I'm not just talking about you know, many of the superintendents, and no disrespect to many of you, but of charter schools, this is a superintendent of public instruction. This is a public uh, you know, uh, superintendent. Uh, and uh, he, he was responsible for educating many of the Hmong uh, children in Tsang Kwa province. But perhaps maybe the gift of the present is also a component of this theme in which we must remember as well. When I think to the privileges and, and honors of, uh, of being able to serve, I often reflect back and realize that in this country, it is only possible here. Only in America that we have over a thousand people gather in a hotel at the 18th HND conference. It is only in America that we will see among women ascent to judgeship, following the footsteps of Judge Lo. It is only in America that we will see a young Hmong woman who is a trustee in Warsaw who's taken on the Board of Supervisors in regards to the Dylan Yang case. It is only in America that we will see a young Hmong woman who see the injustice in Merced County and would decide to run for county supervisor. And she's here today as well, right? You can wave. It is only in America that a young man of 22 years old can actually sit on the board of trustees in a school district and also the board of supervisors. It is only in America that a Itu Nyejimbong will feel compelled to be the first minority to run for public office and actually win a city council. And it remains the only Hmong woman who is on the Brooklyn Park City Council. But remember what I said about honoring those who come before you? All of this is only possible because in the immediate past, there are people like Judge Paulo. There are business entrepreneurs like Thomas Lee, who's here today. There are people like Senator Mimoa, who experience challenges very similar to many of ours. But yet, the beautiful story of this is to see the challenge and to overcome it. Challenges that each and every one of us face makes us special. You know, many of the panel members earlier talked about the unique challenges that they saw and what they did to overcome that. It needs to be retold and needs to be a source of inspiration for many of the young people here today. When you begin to know the person's uh, challenges, you begin to appreciate them. I'm sick and tired of hearing accusations in political uh, campaigns about not having enough experience. Christy Yang saw that in her run for judgeship. 
I'm sick and tired of hearing about the glass ceiling, the bamboo ceiling, whatever you want to call it. It's our obligation to shatter it and to be great. Because you're a Hmong does not mean that you don't speak English. Because you're a Hmong doesn't mean that you live in the projects. It's your obligation, it's your burden to carry that forward and show the rest of the world how great you are. To many of the Hmong communities in the world, they look to us here in the United States as the leaders. You have that obligation. You have that privilege to make sure that whatever you pay forward, it has to be positive and it has to be great. To my own personal experience, when I ran for public office and when I realized that my opponents could not beat me, you start seeing dirty politics in every race that uh, we have witnessed uh, the big among candidates, we have seen that. Don't believe the lies, seek the truth, talk to the candidates. Dispel these stereotypes, defy the odds, and be great. For, for me, I remember specifically, they start making threats. Yeah, believe it. Even in America, even in a city like Earl Crow, I received it. You know, folks who have told me, if you don't stop, I'm going to hurt you. I'm going to rape your children. These are real threats that came to me. But you, you see, one thing that these haters don't understand is that I'm a survivor of the Sioux War of Laos. My family stare at death and we escaped it. So these threats, we have no fear. In fact, it empowers us. Absolutely. It empowers us to be great. It empowers us to want to defy the odds. What are the chances of a refugee boy standing before you as a standing mayor of a city that doesn't have a majority home, but yet we're able to accomplish that? I think it's something to be said about that. You know, the hard work and the messaging that we use to, to be effective. Even when I won office, there was a, uh, a note that came to me. And uh, the note essentially says, uh, you should have stayed a refugee. You're gonna fail because you're a refugee. Go home, refugee. After receiving that, I thought about it and um, I made it a part of who I am. I said, absolutely, you bet I'm a refugee and I'm proud of it. Because I didn't come to the United States of America by choice. I came to the United States because my father rescued American pilots in Northern Laos. I came to this country because my people are a nation of warriors. They are not ordinary people. They are a nation of heroes. Be proud of what your grandparents, of what your parents did. That's the one thing that makes the Hmong community stand out. We're not ordinary. We're exceptional. We stood against tyranny. We stood against communism. That's why we're here in the United States. The Hmong family that came out of Laos are very politically charged because it started from the beginning. We were engaged in the political process. We didn't stand by and let people push us around. So it was only natural to see in a span of just 40 years, many of these electors rise to public office. And I'm quite proud of that. Yeah, thank you.
The future, what does the future hold for the Hmong community? I believe the future will hold many elected Hmong in all the communities in which they Hmong Shadat. The future for the Hmong community is to see additional school board members, council members, mayors, senators, congressmen, governors, and believe it or not, someday we will see a president of this great country of Hmong descent. The obligation of those in elected office, and I charge you with all of this because you guys know how hard it is. Your obligation, and it should be your honor, is to pave the way for those who come after you. To make it easier for the mentee who comes to you and says, show me how to become mayor. Show me how to become a school board member, a judge, a senator. It is our obligation in office. It is the honor that we carry that we have to pave the way for those people who come after us. You see, it's not success if it only happens once. I've always said that. It's a privilege to be the first. Actually, it's a burden as well. Because if you mess up, then everyone's going to be, eh, it's your fault. That's why we can't have another Hmong mayor. <laughs> right? But the more important thing um, that, that I want you to take away is that we have to be able to replicate this success. That's part of the obligation that I carry. That's part of the reasons why I took it upon myself in the midst of, of my mayoral campaign to make sure that I help a young woman, uh, Mayava, in Sacramento City Unified, to rise to be a school board member. That is no different than my help that I had lended to Li Lo, who was running to be a county supervisor, or to Brandon Vang in Sangin Unified south of Fresno. All of these are part of who I am, and it should be a part of many of you who are, are, are a, considered a success story in the Hmong community, to pave the way and mentor those who come after you. When Judge Lowe ascended to judgeship, I told him this. I said, it's not a success until we can replicate this somewhere else. When I spoke, about two weeks ago, I told him that I can call him a success now because in Wisconsin, we have a judge. No different. No different than Senator Mimoa, who rose quickly to become a senator, state senator in Minnesota. She, we can only call her a success when we saw that Senator Fong Ho was elected to replace, to take uh, you know, part in the state legislature. Remember, when you take away, success can only be called success if it is replicable. When I look into the audience, I see many of you. I see thousands of children, of heroes, of the secret army. I'm so proud. What are the chances? What are the chances of refugees coming to this great country. And here we are at a hotel discussing the issues that troubles our community, the ideas that are on the verge of exploding and taking our Hmong community to the next level. When I see that, it makes me excited that the future is positive and the future is strong. 
Last thing I'd like to always acknowledge um, is one, this is a great country. It is possible because of that. Two, there's a divine entity that makes sure that we're on the right track. That being the case, God bless you, God bless the Hmong community, and God bless this great country we call the United States of America. Thank <laughs> you.